Hi, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks for stopping by. I'm really glad you're here. We're actually um, going to do a really gorgeous painting here. We're going to do some ink and wash. Um, this is uh, a nice like scene of kind of like a main street and there's some really nice buildings here and maybe some homes on the right and then maybe like a factory here on the left hand side and some trees. I think this is a great painting just to, um, you know, try out and it's kind of simple. Um, the only thing that I would say is kind of challenging here is the uh, roof angles and things like that. But, um, you know, the trees are pretty simple. Um, and probably just the, the roofs are a little bit, uh, can be challenging with the um, angles. But we'll work that out as we do our pencil sketch. And then we'll go in and we'll add some ink and wash to this. So we're going to use some uh, Speedball uh, Indian ink, super black. So we're going to use some super black uh, India ink by Speedball. And I have a bamboo um, pen here. It's got a large, uh, large size uh, and a smaller size on this uh, side of the pen. So it's really great for uh, doing ink sketches and ink and washes. So we'll zoom out. Um, this is our, again, our reference we're going to use. It's from one of my uh, books I have, one of my teaching books, art teaching books. And we'll set this over here across from us. I'll put some uh, acetate uh, plastic film over my book so that if I splash with my watercolors at all or ink, it won't splash onto the book. And we'll zoom out here. Okay, perfect. So what we'll do is we'll first sketch it with a pencil. And then um, once we get that rough sketch in, then we'll we'll go in and we'll do some of our ink and wash. And then after that, on our third part, we'll, we'll add some color, some uh, beautiful, rich, uh, exciting color to the painting. So here I'm just gonna look at the sketch and I'm gonna say it's about, if we broke this down to um, quarters. So if this is the halfway point, quarter, so if these are quarters here, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, this is the halfway point. Um, about a quarter of the way is the level of the street. So we can get the level of the street like that, the, uh, the, the line for the street. That's a quarter of the way up from the bottom of the painting. And then about halfway is, a little more than halfway up is the um, building roof in the distance, in the middle distance here. And what we can do is we're going to start planning out our painting, of course, here. We're laying things out, so I'm just using some very light preliminary sketch lines here. Again, the, the important thing is to get like your quarters or thirds if you're going to break if you look at your painting and it's more simple, you might be able to break it down into like one-third, one-third, one-thirds, so thirds or quarters. This one we need, I think, quarters because we have a little more uh, information on this, this sketch and this painting here. So we'll use quarters and we'll just go across. That's the again the, 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 uh, the road leading us into the picture. And then, um, again, halfway is about the rooftops of the buildings in the middle distance. Three quarters is about the roofs over here on the side of the painting. So we can sort of kind of just get light sketches going. And that's about there. And then I just relate everything to what I'm seeing in the in the picture. So the, the reference photo that I'm using. Like I noticed this roof here, which is closest to us. This is the building here that's uh, in the foreground here. 
this roof here, this point of where the bottom of the roof is, where the gutters are, this would be where this roof line picks up and goes up this way. And then it, this roof line here goes down further than, than this line here where this roof matches this one, this roof line here. So these are the eaves of the roof. These two eaves match. This one's closest to us. This is the next building over. It matches here with the eaves. But then this eave on this side of the roof, which is the f other end of the roof, the other end of the building, that's going down on an angle about like so. And that's the bottom of that. And then we have the building going down. And then from here, we see that below this eave of roof here, on the far side of this second building, we have the, the gable end of this roof here coming up. And that goes up just a little bit above this, so that's about there and there. So this is just taking, taking our time. Okay, this goes down to the street, uh, street level, a little bit above the street level here. We have a fence coming all the way across, but we're not gonna get too concerned with that. Let's just get our main roof lines in. So let's just get like basically the undulating rooftops going across this picture. Let's get that set. And then once we get that done, then we can go back and maybe, you know, figure out the uh, where the buildings kind of um, intersect into the roadway area. So it's sort of easier to just sort of take a line and start going around your painting and relating all the lines together from each other as we go. And then here we're taking this roof line and saying, okay, now that's the other roof going this way on the same building here. And then this one goes up. And that goes up <clears throat> a little bit higher, and then we'll go across. So again, this is all um, here. Now we're going to have a chimney. That chimney is about in line with this wall here. So there's a, a wall there. We're seeing sort of the side of this part of the building, the side of the building here. And that's a little bit of the roof. The chimney starts about at this line here, which is the end of this section of the building where it intersects with this wall here. So again, roofs and uh, buildings and structures like this can be a little challenging. My main thing is, if we can, just we take our time and try to lightly sketch it and sort of just, you know, kind of eye up the lines as we're going, you know, this roof line meets up with that one, this line here meets up with the chimney, so here's the chimney. It, the chimney's in line with this wall here, and then I just find that line and go up, and that's the chimney there. And this one goes across, and there's another chimney over here. It goes across there. So once we have that, we're pretty much pretty good. We have that, this section finished. And I might have, if you find that you maybe left something a little bit, maybe the wall was a little smaller or the roof was a little larger, whatever it is, you know, you can always erase a line and go across. And I'm going to do that here. This wall, I made that wall a little bit smaller. So I may, I'll make this a little larger. And then the windows, it's two simple rectangles here. And then there's windows down here again, two simple rectangles down here. And then there's a fence. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to sort of go across and just... This fence sort of angles around. And it stops about there. And that's pretty good. And again, we're going to go over this with ink. 
So it'll look a lot more interesting once we put some ink on this. And then here we have a distant, uh, looks like it might be a lake or a river or something over here. So we'll just leave that there. And then there's more of a distant building here. This distant building's a little more um, it's not as uh, I guess important it's not you know it's it's an important part of the painting but it's sort of like in the background a little bit so this is more in the, a little bit of more of a distance than this building so it's sort sort of lighter in tonal value maybe not uh, we don't have to put as much focus on this and that's just a door on the building there and then over here and then I'll add a little more interesting information here I'll I'll add some more building over here since my it didn't work out exactly perfect. And then here we have the the tree on the left side. And we'll just sort of get that tree in there. And we'll do our tree a little more loosely. We're not going to get too bogged down with exactly every angle and turn of each branch and all that. We just get the rough idea. This one here, we have another tree coming over from the left and we'll just bring that one into the picture from over on the left, right side, like so. Another one here, another branch here. And again, this is where We can be a little more free. We don't have to worry. We just know there's some branches and we'll fill that in with our paint. All right, so this is, let's do the other windows over here like that. And then there's another window down here. Could be a door. This could be a door over here and a window and a window. And then there's another window up here. And then over here, just some quick light indications of some windows. There's sort of... and a few perspective lines. Everything seems to be looking okay. This is more of the side of the painting over here so we don't have to get too um, too worried about this side over here on the right side we're just and we'll sort of leave this here with just some light lines and these are some storefronts we could just make some vertical lines there all right so that's there's another roof over here we'll just That looks pretty good. And some lines in the road. There's a shadow going across, so we'll put that shadow line in just so we remember to put that shadow in. Shadow there. And there's some the chimney over here. And there's a few interesting things over here on the left hand side on this building. There's a, an electrical, uh, some utility lines here. And then uh, maybe the utility lines go over here. All right, perfect. All right, good time. We're, this is the perfect time for a break. We did a rough sketch with our pencil. 
just a simple number two pencil, office pencil. Quick sketch, we laid out our drawing. And now we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll go in and we'll do some ink uh, to this, uh, over the top of this sketch on the watercolor paper. And we should really get a nice result with the ink. And then after that, we'll add some paint. All right, we took a break. We're back now and we're gonna uh, start doing our ink portion of our uh, ink and wash of a, a nice streetscape. We have a nice cityscape here. And um, I'm gonna use my India ink. This is a Speedball Super Black ink. And just with ink, I always say, if no matter where you work, whatever, you know, whatever area in your house you like to work, or if you like to work outside more, um, it's always good just maybe put down like a blanket or a um, towel or a um, sheet or something, like an old sheet or towel or blanket, just in case the ink spills, you know, it doesn't make a mess. So here um, I'm just going to put some ink into my inkwell. This is, you can get these um, online. On uh, Online they sell these small ink uh, holders. This might even be from cough medicine. I think this one's a cough medicine uh, cap. And, um, okay, we can start out. So I'm going to use my uh, bamboo ink pen. And all I'm going to basically do is just dip it in to the ink and then start um, rough sketching over the shadows on this uh, and rough outline of this uh, pencil sketch here we have. And I did make a note up here that the light is coming from the left across the page this way. So we'll always remember to put a, a small insignia or a little um, note for ourselves where the light is coming from. This way we, we can always refer back, refer back to that just to know where we're going to want to put our um, shadows. So no matter where we're starting, and we're going to have some fun and, and just enjoy the you can tap off some of the ink if there's too much ink on there and I'm referring back to my photo and I'm just looking where the where the uh, shadows are mostly but I will add in areas that are not necessarily shadow but it's a good start to go where the shadows are with our ink and again, we could tap on our ink or, or we'll just be very careful to, you know, not dip in too far to the ink so that we don't get too, uh, too much ink on there. Okay, so we're going along good here. We have some... And... Let's see. I see some ink along the underside of this eave. And we have some ink. Dark, some darks here on these windows. And I keep referring back to my painting that I'm looking at in the in the book. And And again, I'm just looking at the darks. 
crossing. That's the tree there. Ink and wash is great, like when we're doing tree branches, nice and fast, and we can make some really cool branches are kind of like that. They're they're not so uh, perfectly uh, shaped, so we can go quickly and have some good lines and. Looks pretty good there. And and what I like to do is I I wouldn't feel the, the need to always have to completely uh, outline everything. So I would say if, you st if we stick with doing mostly the shadow sides of the uh, subject matter in our sketch, that's a really good way to start out our, um, our, ink and, our, our ink portion of the ink and wash. And we can always go in later and add a little bit of some more ink once the once we do our wash with our watercolor paint. Then we can go back and actually do a little more ink if we had to to touch up some things that you might think look look better. But again, it's it's your choice how you do it. But I do think that sometimes it's better to under underdo the ink portion a little bit, and then you can always go back in and add some black ink to you know touch things up a little bit or add a dark where you think it could go. But if you just stick with um, the real darks that you see in the in the painting or the photograph you're using, if you stick with that, you're pretty much you're going to be safe with um, with your with your ink portion. And it's really a great technique, the ink and wash, because it's really those dark darks, you really you get those in and it just looks really great. And then when you add the color, it looks really phenomenal with the watercolor. And then again, you can go back in and touch up a little more with some more ink if you want to, or even some Sharpie markers. Sometimes I'll go back in with some Sharpie marker. You can't really distinguish uh, the Sharpie from black ink really when you're when you're doing some touch-ups on your painting, your ink and wash. So I'm getting pretty close to uh, I'm going to do maybe a little shadowing under this, this here, and that's some of the shadow there. And we'll do that with mostly the, the paint, but we do have some shadow here, so I'll just add some ink there, and there's some more shadowing here, going across the picture. Perfect. Okay, so now we we're pretty much uh, we have our we did our pencil sketch first lightly. Um, then we did now our ink. So we did our ink where the shadows are, the lights coming from this side of the picture coming across, and we're working of course from our ref reference uh, picture. And. At this point, I think we'll take a break. It's always good to take breaks every 15, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Everyone's different, but probably every 15, 20 minutes, is, it's good to take a break. And um, just relax a few, for a few minutes, maybe five or 10 minutes, and then get back into painting or drawing, whatever we're doing. And we'll do some just some lines there. Some telegraph or telephone lines. And we'll do some, some
some more shadowing under there. And if you find you have a spot where you <clears throat> added too much ink, which happens to me occasionally, um, no worries. What I do is I just take some uh, tissue and try to try to carefully maybe try to And sometimes too an aggressive, uh, just kind of push down on it quickly. And that worked okay. Yeah, so that's all right. And, you know, if you can carefully blot up some ink, if you some went, you know, out of control on the, it's no big deal. You can do that, or you can just let it dry, and then go over with some white paint later. I'm going to do some white paint touch up here too, some titanium white. So what I'm going to do now is. Um, I'm going to use my uh, blow dryer and just dry this a little bit and then we'll, we'll go back in and we'll start doing the colors, the watercolor painting. Okay, we're back and we dried off our ink and wash with a little bit of um, some blow drying with a blow dryer. And um, I uh, feel that right now it's, it's, a, it's really, this is a great part of the painting because once our um, ink is completely dry, we can go over with uh, some glazings of, of paint and it's not going to really uh, cause any problem with our ink. This is good uh, super black speedball uh, India ink and it's it's permanent ink so it won't reactivate with watercolor at all. So well as long as it's completely dry. So that's the thing we have to let this completely dry. Once we do our ink portion, we let that completely dry. And then we, you know, um, then we can go back and, and start doing our watercolor painting portion. So let's do that. Let's do our washes. And we'll start out. We'll do the glazing method here. So we'll go over with our lighter glazes first of color, our washes, our lighter washes. And then once that starts to dry, then we'll start working in our darker tonal values and colors um, to this picture. And um, that should work out perfect. So our first uh, washes, we're going to use, um, I'm going to see if I can get a larger brush. This is a number 10. So I'm going to use a number 10 Da Vinci uh, round brush. And we'll use some cerulean blue. Cobalt blue. And some decent amount of water in there, so it's going to be a, a middle tone, not too dark. And maybe a little bit of some alizarin crimson just to add a little variety to our blue, cobalt blue. And you can see the ink is not affected whatsoever. And then we'll bring this color down. We'll use a little bit of an orange, cadmium orange. That's a warmer color toward the um, toward the horizon line here. And we can just bring it right into the buildings. Um, same thing with the blue and the alizarin crimson. We can just give it a glazing. This is this is very bright in the picture. The sunlight's coming from this direction, so let's I'll dry some of that paint off this. And this is in shadow here, so I'm just going to put some light glazing on there. And then I notice there's some, I'll use some yellow ochre. I 
there. And that should be good. Okay, perfect. The first glaze, we have that completed. And we would let this dry now. <clears throat> that first glaze, we would let that dry. I'll use a blow dryer. Okay, that's <clears throat> that's really good and dry. It's a little damp, but it, it's not going to give us a problem. And we will uh, go in. We'll get some burnt umber, <clears throat> some burnt sienna, and some yellow ochre, raw umber, and maybe we'll we'll start. Okay, here we're going to block in some of our colors on our buildings. I might take a little more artist li liberty here and maybe add a little more colors than, than are in the picture. I'll be careful to leave that fence, fence line in, in the painting. That's something where sometimes we'll make a note of it. Maybe when we're, um, maybe next to our, our uh, art table, we can just remember and say, write in a quick note saying, remember to leave white fence at uh, bottom of buildings. Um, white or white paper. And we'll keep working our way around this way. There's some paint there. This face of this building here is lighter. Cerulean blue and, and raw umber for the roofs. Cobalt, cerulean blue, raw umber, and that gives us our roof. Maybe a little French ultramarine too.
and some of the warmer colors for the chimney. And again, we can touch up and add a little color to this once we're A little yellow ochre over here. Maybe a little bit of cadmium, lemon yellow. Cadmium lemon. And we'll go in and do some finer, finer detail later. I'm just using some mixtures of purple, the blues, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, mineral violet, uh, raw umber. And then I went over the fence there. And some cobalt, French ultramarine. And we'll keep keep going here we'll do some burnt sienna burnt umber raw umber and we'll just start working in the then we can add in some touches of color Lizard and Crimson, Burnt Sienna.
Okay, so we're getting lots of good color intensity here. Lots of moist, uh, fresh squeezed paint from our palette to get these beautiful, you know, exciting uh, uh, colors. Um, we wouldn't be able to get these colors if we had dried paint. So I always uh, mention that to try to use a uh, fresh squeeze to paint if you can at all times when you're painting watercolor then you always have the f um, option of using uh, your darker more rich uh, colors as you're as you're painting and this looks pretty good so now we have the um, shadow along the street and the trees up above and we can Look at our painting one more time. So now we're going to do the, the treetops over the top of the painting and then the shadow across the uh, very bottom of the painting, the shadow across the street. And maybe a little bit of shadowing here. There's some Okay, we'll move back to our larger number eight, uh, number ten actually, uh, Da Vinci Maestro uh, round brush. We'll get some um, some colors for the trees here. I'm going to use um, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and some uh, olive green. And some sap green. Just a little bit of... That's about it. And we'll do some splashing just to... And if you see some splashing... That goes a little bit into the sky. You could just, if you don't like the look of it, you can kind of just not, you can not splash. Or you can do a more, you can take paint and um, use like a, this would be a little more, you can get a little more um, careful splashes if you tap tap like that sometimes. It's good to practice that sp um, spattering and splashing on a piece of just you know regular office paper, printer paper sometimes to get a kind of a feel for it, maybe before the painting. And I think that looks pretty good. I might add some green. I feel like this is kind of a fall, maybe, kind of an autumn scene, so there's a little more reds and uh, warmer colors in the tree areas. And you can darken up, a, you can darken up a spot.
Okay, let's let this dry and then we'll do our final shadowing across the front of the um, street here and we should be finished. All right, things have dried a little bit, so we're kind of uh, set to um, continue on here. And uh, I take a little break every now and again. That's a good thing to do. Um, so before I do the, this will be the last thing we'll do as far as the, the foreground shadow. We'll do that last. This way, if we're working uh, anywhere around here, we're not going to uh, lean into it with our hands. So it's good to, you know, I always think about, I'm, I'm going to work left to right. Since I'm a right-handed person, I usually always work with my watercolors left to right. And then if we're working on the painting, we, we're going to put in some more uh, shadowing or more colors or paint in the middle of the painting. It wouldn't be a good thing to put this shadow in right here. It would be better to wait, and then we can do some more work. I tend to always rest my hand on the paper most times when I'm painting. So here we're going to... Um, I'll move to a smaller brush. This is maybe a number six. And uh, French ultramarine blue, mineral violet, cobalt blue, a little bit of uh, And we'll go and do the shadow across here. And a little more shadowing up here, so. Just some indications of shadows. gets too dark, tap up a little. Again, I'm going to try to keep that fence. And then we can, to keep that fence line a little better, we can go with um, French ultramarine blue and uh, burnt umber and some burnt sienna. And uh, that'll help to define the fence a little bit. We can do some So now, get a little color there on the side of that building. And I'll put in some shadows here, some mineral violet. Cerulean blue. And in that shadow, I just put a little bit of the green mixture, which was uh, olive green and some raw umber, just to give it some little bit of variation there. And I'll put some 
some of that same mixture too along here. And some lines just to indicate some movement. And then we'll go with the shadow. I think we're pretty good here. Um, let's do our shadow. Mineral violet. Some umber. I'll keep the darkest part of the shadow at the base. Mineral violet, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber. Then as I move, maybe I'll use some olive green in there just to And that looks pretty good, so I'm going to leave that as it is. I'll maybe do a little more, maybe I'll do some touch-up with um, our Sharpie. So we could always do a few touch-ups. Our Sharpie pens. There we go. And we'll do a few figures. Figures, I think, are in this picture. They're mostly uh, in shadow. I guess the thing with figures is we're going to use mostly thicker paint. We won't use thin paint. We'll use mostly thick paint. So we'll mix up some uh, raw umber and some burnt sienna here. And then I'll dry some of that off on a, on a tissue. And we'll do this figure here, which is right about here. It's like a um, woman with a dress and a bluish purple coat. And maybe a little cadmium red for the um, for the face. Some uh, burnt umber for the and French ultramarine blue for the legs. They're in very much shadow here. And there's another person here in a and I tend to think of For figures like this that are in the distance, thicker paint, not too much water, and just, you know, general idea of a jacket, kind of maybe a little bit of movement with the, um, the wind or something, and then um, the legs, very quick, and then again the red, cadmium red, for the uh, face.
Then there's a shadow on the figures. And there's another figure over here. This one's a little more challenging. There's some wet paint here, so I'm just really got to go with the thick paint. Straight tube paint, no water. I dried my brush off on the tissue before I picked up the paint. And just some legs, quick legs. And the dark is fine for the for the head too here. We'll put maybe a little bit of highlight on there. So just an indication of some figures here. Doesn't have to be uh, anything in detail. And I thought over here, this is water. I thought maybe to lighten this up a little bit. And then maybe blot up some paint. Maybe some um, a little bit of green to that water, maybe. few seagulls and that's about it it looks good it's ink and wash we had fun we'll peel off the tape and kind of see what it looks like I guess the key is not to go too much with too much detail and keep going over things. And then maybe in a day we can look at it one day later and say, okay, maybe I'll add a little more ink in there, like to a few spots, maybe just, you know, to add a, a one or two details to it. But that's pretty good. Um, I use Sharpie again to go in and do some details here and there. Do some details to the fence. And yeah, we'll zoom in. And again, we had a lot of fun, preliminary sketch, light preliminary sketch. We get the roof angles as best we can. Then we go over with our, we, get, we do our ink and do the shadows in ink, the black ink. And, um, and then we add our watercolor. So it's an ink and wash, basically. We had a lot of fun and we can always try, um, different ways of uh, doing a painting like this. We can always break it down and make it smaller, like that. So maybe we can, sometimes I like to do a smaller section first, like that, as like a preliminary uh, composition, and then I'll do a full painting. Once I've tried this one time, then I can go and I'll make a more larger painting of the same same design in colors and, and uh, type type of painting, like for an ink and wash as this is. All right, everyone, I hope, hope you had a lot of fun, um, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.